Hi, I'm Francesco Garapoli, and I welcome you to another installment of Wuji Mountain Musings. Today is number 108, which is actually the last one in the new book, Chi Effect, that will be coming out in the summer of 2023. Thanks to publishing, it takes a while for books to come out. Hopefully, when you're watching this, it's already out. But if not, thanks for your support. Wuji Mountain Musings is the last chapter. And it reflects my discoveries here living in solitary on Wuji Mountain in North Carolina. And it's the end of a very complex book on Qi, life force energy. And the musings are kind of poetic explorations on our Qigong yoga, Tai Chi practice, meditation, and how these principles of life force energy apply to us. So number 108, the last one, which is also a very important number in Taoism, represents that wholeness of being, that spirit within us. So let's see what 108 has to say. Yes, Qigong practice, including meditation, Tai Chi, and yoga, is key to helping us see the world in a clear way. Life can be quite complex for all of us. We each are delivered a unique experience set called life that is tailored to us based on our choices and karma. It's what we do in that flow that makes us who we are. Well, it sounds kind of common sense, you know, that what we do in our practice, what we do with what happens to us, what we do with the choices that we make, that, that creates our journey and our practice. It really doesn't matter if your practice is mostly meditation or mostly yoga or mostly Qigong, mostly Tai Chi, or a mixture of any of those. First off, you are in the small percentage of the world because sadly, we look at the world around us, we know that most people don't have a personal practice. At best, they go to church on Sundays. Um, thank goodness for having some moral compass, some, some spiritual connection. But personal practice is special and beautiful because it's that piece of us that we can take with us wherever we go. Right? Our practice is what we can do when the you-know-what hits the fan. It's the practice we do when we have that few minutes of quiet time instead of watching the television or checking social media. We can close our eyes and do some movements. And again, if it's yoga or Tai Chi movements, Qigong Yu movements, I mean, it's beautiful. That you're doing something is fabulous. Of course, my alignment is much more towards qigong with a mix of yoga in it that's my personal practice every day it's a deal breaker i i can't start my day without that because i know my personal practice sets my tone so when the first time a phone call comes in or i look at an email or i deal with my wuji mountain responsibilities which are massive up here i have some grounding centering sense of being this is why your practice is important. It's your commitment to yourself. It's not what you tell other people. It's not to put you in a club. Maybe those things are important to you, and that's great too. I'm the you know chairman emeritus of the National Qigong Association, so we have a massive organization. It's been around for almost 25 years. It's beautiful, you know. So a community is important. I'm the chairman of the Qigong Institute. Again, lots of people around the world rely on the Qigong Institute for its nonprofit information. But your practice is beyond that. It's beyond that outward part of who you are. Your practice is about who you are inside. Who is that person who makes the choice to say, I'm going to take out 10, 15, 20 minutes to do my practice today, even though my schedule is overwhelming and I have a lot of stuff to do, even though an emergency just came up, even though your litany of excuses. This is what life is about. It's who you are in the midst of what the world presents to you. And I'll give you a secret. It's not the world presenting to you anything. The world is a reflection of you. 
Even if you call it your job, even if you call it your children and your family responsibilities, even if you call it just life or accidents, no. Everything, every one of those is a reflection of you and your dreaming, your expression in this world about how you came to be. Your choices led you to this moment. Of course they did. Your karma led you to this moment. Whether you believe in karma or not, karma is a very complex concept that even includes epigenetic influences that have gone on ancestrally through your bloodline. This is a part of karma as well. It's not just what you did as a teenager. It's not just what may have happened in a past life. Other than thinking about past life epigenetically through your ancestral line and understanding that there's a lot of influences that come to you that sit in your epigenetic soup. This is your histone proteins around every single DNA core of your nucleus of every cell in your body. You're carrying a messaging within you. And you can battle that as subconscious messaging and deal with therapy your whole life, or you can take it front on from a heart-centered, heart-resonance place. And take a breath and say, I choose a practice that is going to center me in that heart resonant place. It's going to ground me into an earth-centered place. It's going to remind me that I am not externally referenced by the world around me and all that stuff that happens, whether it's on social media or whether it's globally or whether it's anything in the news you read about politically or otherwise medically, you have to remember this journey is a spiritual journey. And that means it's internally referenced. And you might say, well, I thought spirit was out there. Well, please, there's no out there. There's no in there. There's just there. And where you choose there to be, where you choose your core to be, And if your core can be in heart resonance, and I don't necessarily mean the beating muscle here, but that does harmonize with the frequency of Shen Shi or Spirit Shi, but your heart resonance is the complete contribution to your energetic field, both your Wei Qi field, your body's unique signature set that comes from your organs, like I teach and certify people in organ cleansing Qigong, It's also your energy field that is mixed with the world around you, that's constantly interfacing in the world around you. As I talk about the third field, your Venn diagram, so to speak, overlap of your energy and the world and understanding the power of that. Your practice brings you to this remembering. Your practice confronts that conditioning, right? Think of the conditioning we're under. You say, oh, I'm, I'm free. I'm not conditioned. You're absolutely conditioned. I'm conditioned. I know that enough because I do my practice every day. And I confront gently what that conditioning, what that subconscious automated habitual thinking or emotional reaction may be. I do this enough. I've been diligent enough over 40 years or more of doing this practice, studying with great masters, to know that I can catch it at the very subtle level, when an emotion comes up or a conditioning response comes up, so I can capture that in heart space and transform it and become free. This is how we become sovereign. This is how our practice can remind us who we truly are as energetic beings. Yes, physical. Yes, I understand that part. We are conditioned to believe ourselves to be this materialistic being, but that's only one part of who we are. And within that materialistic world is an absolutely infinite energetic world that connects us to our true nature as infinite consciousness, knowing itself through this human experience. So let this human experience be guided by heart resonance and by your practice a practice that resets you every day, every minute of every day, hopefully, through your breath, grounds you and centers you and reminds you of this miracle, this beautiful experience we have called life.